Hello and welcome to Smallbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is whiskey review number 52. Uh, what I have for you today uh, is a Highland single malt scotch whiskey. It is a new release from Glenmorangie Distillery uh, and that comes in the form of the Glenmorangie Private Edition number 8, Bacalta. Right, so Private Edition uh, there's been quite a few releases in that line now. There are a lot of no age statement releases from Glenmorangie that have various different edition types. And the Bacalta is the latest of these. Uh, in case you can't see, it is an official sample provided to me. Uh, so before we go any further, once again, to reiterate, as I've reiterated on my previous reviews, just because I've been provided with this sample does not mean I'm going to give it a favourable review because I've been provided it. So, moving on. Glenmorangie is a Highland distillery, so we're back on the mainland now from last uh, last week's, or well, depends when I post it I suppose, but let's say last week's review of uh, Colila 12 year old. Okie dokie. Glenmorangie is owned by the Moe Hennessy Company, who also own our beg. Bit of a fact for uh, Glenmorangie, uh, capacity of around 6 million litres of spirit a year and they actually have the tallest stills in Scotland. Uh, these stills are actually designed around the original stills provided to the distillery, uh, which were actually gained from an old gin distillery in about 1887. So uh, quite unique really in the sense that it has got the tallest stills in Scotland, uh, and you know the stills that they had originally were actually from a gin distillery. Quite odd. So onto the whiskey itself, the Glenmorangie Picolta. Initially matured in X bourbon casks, it was then placed for a second stint of maturation in X Madeira wine casks. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of blurb and, and bluster about this whiskey in terms of its marketing, uh, which, given Glenmorangie's sort of previous uh, with this, is no surprise. They do like a bit of bluster. Um, and that comes with a lot of anecdotes, just sun-baked, uh, you know, searing heat um, and things like that, quite a lot of alliteration going on. But effectively, all it is, is a whiskey matured in ex-bourbon casks and then placed into some ex-Madeira casks. Um, and these Madeira casks were actually made specially for this whiskey. Um, so they did hold Madeira previously, but Glenmorangie actually said, look, I want the cask to be like this. Put some, put some Madeira wine in it, and once that's done, we'll stick our whiskey in it. Long story short, it's bottled at 46%. It is not chill filtered, which is a positive, as well as the 46% bottling strength. Uh, I am unsure as to whether it's natural colour or not, because they've not said, so let's assume it's not. Because you know I'm a bit of a pessimist. Uh, you might, might have sort of latched onto that fact after the first uh, couple of reviews that I did. So, some nice legs on the glass there. In terms of colour, you know, I mean, if they're gonna if they're gonna do this, then then let's do it. You know, let's let's have a bit of fun. Capri Sun Orange. Capri Sun. Can't be a Capri Sun, can you? Sometimes it takes you back to your childhood. But to be fair, I actually still buy them. A bit of a guilty pleasure. Capri Sun Orange. You know, you can have that tea marketing blurb if you want. Actually, Glen Orange. If you're watching, I want some royalties for that. If you use that in your next release. Do you hear? Right, on to the nose. Initially very creamy and a lot of fruit. And I was talking about Capri Sun Orange for a colour. There's a lot of orange in there, orange zest and also sort of a sponge cakey thing in there. So think of like a, an orange sponge, uh, maybe soaked in orange juice. A little bit of ginger in there, sort of ginger biscuits maybe, sort of ginger nuts. So sort of kind of like a blossomy flower, pollen-y kind of note in there as well, maybe a bit of perfume. A lot of honey though, there is quite a lot of honey in there, it almost feels quite thick. The nose actually has a texture in itself, it just feels quite gloopy and thick and stodgy. Quite interesting. It's 
it's actually got another side to it now because I'm actually getting coffee. Um, almost like. Yeah, I thought I did right. Creme, bl uh, creme brulee as well, actually. But yeah, I'd say sort of like a, a coffee note in there. Um, it's kind of creamy, hence the creme brulee. A little bit of vanilla. It's actually a little bit of chocolate in there now as well, sort of white or milk chocolate. Probably leaning towards the milk chocolate, if I'm honest. It's not quite as sickly as white chocolate. Going back to the fruits now, I'm getting like grilled grapefruit that you might have for breakfast in the morning. I'm not a big fan, uh, but my fiance is quite a, quite a big fan of that. I can't stand it. Who has fruit for breakfast? I don't get that. Do not get it. Do you know what I said about the coffee and the in the kind of creamy milkiness to it? I'm actually getting a bit of a milk stout note, you know, like a, a really nice milk stout beer. I'm a big beer drinker, I love, love a good proper ale and, and craft beer. And this, it does actually sort of remind me of, of a lot of good milk stouts that I've had in the past. And towards the end, there's something a bit odd. It's going to sound really weird this, I'm actually getting sort of like a tangy goat's cheese kind of note at the end. Now I have had whiskies in the past that do have a bit of a, a cheese note to it, and I know that sounds stupid and it sounds disgusting. Uh, Glen Geary Founders Reserve is one that's got quite a, a chunky cheddary cheese note to it. This, as I say, is sort of like a quite tart acidic goat's cheese. But for the most part, the nose does centre around that sort of honey, stewed fruity kind of note, uh, sort of spiced ginger, as I mentioned, and the sort of vanilla -y creaminess, sort of akin to, once again, the creme brulee. So, promising so far, a little bit of an up and down. I'll, uh, I'll try the palette now. Good mouthfeel, in fairness to Very good mouthfeel, actually. Instantly. Really nice, indulgent sweetness. Well, it's lovely. It's really nice. Think of a lot of toffee, caramel on the, on the, in the pan. Um, I wouldn't eat it straight from the pan, by the way, because, you know, you'll burn your mouth. A visit to A&E. Um, and then, after that, I don't know if you might have tried this, but... When I was a kid, my mum used to buy these little little tins of fruit, like a fruit mix. It came with like pineapple and apricot and like a random cherry in there or something like that. And only like little tins, but you used to sort of like have your fruit and then you drink the syrup out of it after. And it is that sort of fruit syrup that all this stuff's been sat in for a while. So again, fruity, very sweet. There is still that sort of like chocolate note in there and the coffee. And again, I'm sticking with the milk stout because it's very sort of silky. And it does get bitter, like a, like a good stout should, but it is this really nice sort of smooth, milky transition. Sounded weird, didn't it? Sorry. I know I do go on sometimes. I'm going to try it with water. So... I'm just going to put a tiny bit more in, don't worry, I've... I've already had some of this, so I've not had much. I know I mentioned on the nose this sort of like sponge cake. Still getting that. Kind of leaning towards now into the finish, sort of like a Black Forest Gatto with that sort of Kirsch soaked um, sponge sort of element to it. A little bit of chocolate, We've got, got some sort of dark cherry in there. Interesting. Finish is medium length, um, 
quite sweet. Again, it gets a little bit bitter. And the white chocolate that I said was missing from the palate in the nose is actually on the finish. It does get quite, quite sweet. A little bit of vanilla and then it gets a bit sickly. Um, so I'm going to put a teaspoon of water in it now. Plenty in there for a teaspoon. While that's opening up, I think I think it's very good that they've not chill filtered it, and they actually say that they're not, and it's forty six percent. The one thing that does irk me slightly is that uh, in in the marketing book that came with the sample, you basically get a sheet that sort of explains the process behind it and that. Um, the, and it's it's not necessarily aimed at this bottling or Glenmorangie in particular. Uh, I think it's. You know, it's good that a lot of distilleries are starting to offer whiskies in their core ranges or, you know, outside of that, you know, just in general official bottlings that are not chill filters. Um, but I think one thing that does sort of like get my back up a little bit is the way that they make it sound as though they're doing you a favour by doing this. And uh, they sort of like pump it over with a lot of stuff like, sort of, you know, to ensure it continues with its rich and voluptuous finish and texture. It's like, to, to be honest, in my opinion, distilleries should be not chill filtering the whiskey anyway. It's not like you're doing us a massive favour by doing it. It's good that you are, but it should not be the industry norm. And, and the fact is that, you know, it's kind of sad that that's the case. You know, a lot of distilleries do do that. The majority of distilleries do it. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully, I don't, I can't see it happening, to be honest, but you never know, one day we might get to a stage where whiskey's that sort of like come out from the uh, from the production line as a core range, just don't have chill filtration on it. Springman do it, you know, we, we touched on that a couple of reviews ago. Um, they don't do it, and it's, it's great that they don't. It adds character to the whiskey, it adds texture, it adds flavour in my opinion. It doesn't dull it down quite as much. Um, so, yeah, rant over. Don't chill filter your whiskey. And uh, talk about putting water in whiskey and that. Just just move, just got water all over my table. Um, still some tears in the glass legs, however you want to call it. It doesn't make a slight bit of difference to be honest. On the nose now with water. Already, it's still very sweet, but it's lighter. It's not as thick, it's not as clunky. Um, it's still a bit, a bit of honey in there. Yeah, still some vanilla, there's still a bit of cream. And there's still orange in there as well. I won't say that it adds anything to it, but on the plus side, neither is it taking anything away. So that's a good sign. That's a good start. On the uh, palette now. Mouthfeel still quite good, quite thick. Chocolate, we mentioned that before. Mm. I've actually switched fruit types. We've gone for a different type of fruit now. We're going red fruits, we're going berries, we're going raspberries, we're going strawberries, we're going cream, a little bit of sugar on. Finish is shorter, but it's actually not as bitter. It's taking a little bit of bitterness away from it, in my opinion. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, it's a little bit shorter, but the finish is a bit more pleasant, although it is warming up a little bit now. Um, you might have watched a few reviews where I make that weird noise where I've got whiskey in my mouth and I sort of make like a, like a fish drowning. If that makes sense. Doesn't. They swim. Uh, they live in water, in fact. Terrible analogy. Um, basically, all I'm trying to do is get air into my mouth and, and around, uh, around the whiskey as well, because that, that does sort of help you taste it a little, little better. Um, so, sorry about the weird noise, but you know, that's just how I do it. Mm. Mm. I was tempted to go on a bit of a lemon zest rant again then, just like I did with tea and a couple of others, but I won't. One thing I did get on the nose then, just before going onto the palate again, was sort of meringue nests. You know, like you get an eaten mess, just like a bit plain meringue. And yeah, okay, right, there is quite a lot of lemon zest. Palette, not really much more to say. Still got toffee caramel in there as well. 
And yeah, the milk stout is still there, maybe with a little bit of cherry in it this time, a cherry milk stout, which does sound like quite a good idea for a beer. Um, finish, yeah, short, sweet, literally quite short and quite sweet. And that's pretty much it. So it's quite an interesting whiskey. It's certainly um, another example of Glenmorangie um, choosing to finish their whiskies in quite unique styles. Uh, obviously, you know, they, they do do quite a bit of sort of improvisation, should we say. Uh, Dr. Bill Lumsden uh, is quite a advocate, I'd say, for uh, experimentation, which is is a good thing in whiskey, don't get me wrong. I think if we were all still traditionalists, uh, we'd be drinking the same stuff, uh, and it all tastes the same, shockingly enough. So, yeah, it's, it's a good dram. Um, I didn't actually tell you how much this uh, this costs, like I normally do, so I do apologise. Uh, this retails at around £79, well, £79.95 from memory. You can find it a bit cheaper between £75 to £79, but let's say £79 for argument's sake. So, it's no age statement. Uh, it is around 80 quid. I'm going to say it's expensive for what it is. It's good whiskey, there's no doubt in that, but it does have its flaws. It's a nice experience, some really nice flavours on the palate. Um, and, you know, it does feel like quite a sunny whiskey, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, you can imagine this drinking this in Spain, on the beach, um, or Portugal or somewhere like that, you know. Uh, it does give you that sort of affini um, affinity for it and that, uh, that sort of picture in your head. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, as I say, it's not a statement, it's 80 quid. It is quite overpriced in my humble opinion. I do apologise to, uh, to anybody that disagrees, but that's, that's fine. That's what whiskey is all about. All about a good discussion. Um, on that note, in terms of score, I am going to give this whiskey an 86 out of 100. Uh, as I say, it does have good size to it and I think it is quite well put together. It's good that it's non-chill filtered, it's about 46%. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.